they're all finished up. Wow, that window's bright. But right there, we wanted to take and put the diamond plate wall and kind of how do you tie it into all of this? Well, you do what we do. We manufactured a sling bow, came up with the badass slingshot. So I, like I said, I got my military stuff like that. Mark Williams, buddy of mine, dropped off this flag. It's all hand done, glued together. Uh, he sells them for like 75 bucks shipped. If you want one, let me know. I can get you hooked up with him. But here it is, the evolution of the badass slingshot slash sling bow. So here's the original. This is the one that started it all. Um, the adjustable draw weights, flat bands, whisker biscuit holder. You could put the AMS on there with this bracket. Uh, this is the one I started out with. I took it to first ATA show um, and actually only had, uh, had only made four of them, I think. Uh, basically prototypes and uh, went there and sold uh, tell everybody I started out with sold 325 sling bows I never even owned never had built came back home and started building them and the rest is kind of history but then uh, this was just a really a bear to make uh, we broke so many taps and dies doing this I got so much scrap laying around still um, that out of necessity I came up with the bend where we could bend it and then we use this little system with a piece of tubing and um, basically everything else is the same, but we made it all piece by piece and machined it and everything. Um, so once we did that, you know, guys were uh, wanting to go more power, more power. So I just took and doubled it up, welded this piece on here. Um, but one thing we started doing this, we started realizing you had to start making everything, trying to get everything exactly the same so you could match up pieces and everything. Um, and then this kind of evolved into this where I could go back to the tubes. I always knew that the tubes were better for bow fishing. I was getting more power out of the flat bands, but the tubes were nice because they were rigid and, uh, you could knock an arrow and everything. So we went to that. And then obviously, since we did that, we knew we could do this and double this up. And this really was, uh, this really was the one that just made a big impact into bow fishing. Um, and then it's right about this time, we went from sling slingshots here to sling bows. Um, just because it was a it was a kind of a legal deal. We were trying to we were dealing with some states and trying to say that it met all the definitions of a bow, blah blah blah. And they kept saying, "Well, you call it a slingshot." So we actually somewhere right in here we evolved into sling bows. Um, once we did this one. I just kind of screwing around made this one. It's a little smaller, so we made the mini mag. This one was called the Magnum. This was the mini mag, bow fisher, beast, and hunter series. So like I said, so we're welding these. We're trying to sort through everything, making sure we got uh, pieces that kind of match. And since we were basically making it piece by piece, it was hard. We had a lot of scrap, and it took a, it was a very in depth to get them made. Um, and that's when we started doing the going into the machining, where all the parts are machined. So every part is exactly the same for the model. Um, and then it, what that does is it made uh, production a lot more expensive, but it made less scrap um, and just made everything exactly the same. Um, right into here is where we got rid of the whisker biscuit holder. You see? Started machining that right inside, so it became all one piece. So there it is, kind of the, the evolution all in one spot.